Assalamu alaikum everyone today we have a very important topic at hand i'm saying it very important not only because it is tested extensively in exams but also because to in find it the most difficult topic in o levels chemistry today we are going to discuss moles we are going to discuss moles now what exactly is a mole mole is just a unit to measure the amount of a substance mole is just a unit to measure the amount of a substance pretty much like let's say uh, let's say uh, mm, let's say i say that one dozen i know that one dozen of anything is equal to 12 of those things similarly uh, one mole of anything one mole of anything one mole of anything is equal to this number of those things this number of those things 6.02 into 10 to raised power 23 this number is called avogadro's number avogadro's number it's the name of the scientist who came up with that number pretty much like if one dozen is equal one dozen of anything is equal to 12 of those things one mole of anything is equal to the amount of mass the amount of substance in these number of things for example let's say if i take one mole of feathers let's say one mole of feathers feathers okay it means that there are it will be equal to amount of amount of feathers in amount of feathers in this this much feathers in these number of feathers okay but or one mole of let's say bricks one mole of bricks is equal to amount of substance in this number of bricks okay but obviously we do not use moles to measure uh, to measure the amount of breaks or feathers we don't use we don't use moles for this we use moles for microscopic particles like atoms molecules like atoms ions atoms ions and molecules we know that atoms ions and molecules are extremely small entities they are so small that you have to take a quite a number of them to be able to actually weigh them you cannot actually weigh one uh, mass mass of one atom you cannot weigh that because it's so small right so you have to take a significant number of atoms ions or molecules to be able to weigh them that's why we come up with the concept of moles moles is equal to this much number of those things for example if i say that one mole of atoms one mole of atoms mean one mole of atoms would mean the amount of substance in this much number of atoms okay one mole of molecule would mean one mole of of a molecule any molecule i'm not even uh, naming a molecule here one mole of a molecule would be equal to the amount of substance in these number of molecules these number of molecules right now let's let's make it a bit more specific uh, scientists actually tested the concept of mole on the atoms of carbon okay they identify they identify they identify moles or they define moles in terms of carbon like this so they define it like this one mole of any substance is actually the amount of atoms amount of atoms in 12 grams in 12 grams of carbon 12 atom now this may seem confusing at first one mole is the amount of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12 atom so you need to understand first that 12 grams of carbon 12 atom actually has how much uh, number of carbon atom this is equal to actually have a gadrel's number like 6.02 into 10 to raise power 23 so it actually defines like i was saying before that one mole of atoms is actually equal to the amount of substance in a number of atoms right so when I, when we are saying that one mole of any substance is the amount of atoms one mole of any substance is equal to the amount of atoms in 12 gram of carbon 12 atom 12 gram of carbon 12 atom actually means avogadro number because 12 grams of a carbon 12 atom what does the carbon 12 mean uh, the carbon atom with uh, the isotopic the carbon 12 isotope actually 
okay so the 12 gram of carbon 12 atom actually contains a greater number of particles okay so this is just another way of writing it so that one mole of any substance one mole of any substance has actually the same amount of atoms that are present in avogadro number of carbon atoms or you can say 12 grams of carbon 12 atom let me let me define it again let me revise all of it again okay uh, before it gets confusing so i said that one mole of anything is equal to avogadro number is equal to the amount of substance in avogadro number of those things you represent avogadro number with na a for avogadro n for number okay so I, if i take one mole of sodium let's say if i take one mole of sodium it means i'm talking about the amount of substance it means that we are talking i'm talking about the amount of substance in avogadro number of sodium atoms it means that i'm talking about the amount of substance in avogadro number of avogadro number of sodium atoms so one mole of sodium atoms is equal to this amount of avogadro number of atoms okay which is equal to what which is equal to 23 grams so one mole of an one mole of sodium will be equal to the amount of substance in avogadro number of sodium atoms and what would be the amount of that substance you can measure it in grams 23 grams as you can see in the periodic table okay so similarly let's say one mole of nacl if i talk about one mole of not even nacl let's talk about one mole of magnesium one mole of magnesium means the amount of substance in avogadro number of magnesium atoms in avogadro number of magnesium atoms right and which is equal to which is equal to how many grams magnesium has magnesium is 24 grams okay and that's not only for atoms let's say one mole of nacl if i say one mole of nacl it means that i'm talking about avogadro number of avogadro number of molecules of nacl nacl molecules one mole of nacl means the amount of substance you will you'll be required to write the amount of substance in avogadro number of nacl molecules okay in avogadro number of nacl molecules which would be equal to Sodium has 23 grams, chlorine has 35.5 grams, so the answer would be 58.5 grams. Okay. For example, if I take two moles of magnesium, if I take two moles of magnesium, this would be multiplied by two. If I take two moles of magnesium, if I take two moles of magnesium here, if I say how much, how if how much is the amount of substance in two moles of magnesium? or what is two moles of magnesium equal to in grams so you would know that two moles of magnesium will have the amount of substance will have the amount of substance in two into avogadro number of two into avogadro number of magnesium atoms which will be equal to 24 into 2 grams 48 grams okay so that's how uh, that's how it works out so that is not only for atoms it, it stands for molecules as well so how would you define a mole one mole of any substance one mole of any element is equal to the amount of substance that is present in one mole of carbon 12 atoms okay now one mole of carbon 12 atoms actually is one mole of carbon 12 atom actually means avogadro number okay so we basically use carbon as a basic standard because carbon is abundant on earth okay we have actually measured even when we talk about relative atomic masses we talk about relative atomic mass and not atomic mass we talk about ar relative atomic mass why because all of the masses we measure is in respect to carbon 12 atom we measured the mass of carbon 12 atom and then we checked whether particular whether rest of the elements are how how many times heavier or lighter than carbon and then we came up with the uh, with all their masses so that's why Uh, we uh, even in moles we are actually comparing it with the carbon 12 atom because it is the most abundant element on one of the most abundant elements okay on earth so how would you define a mole mole is the amount of substance mole of any element is equal to amount of substance amount of substance present in 
or you can also say that uh, one mole of any substance contains the same number of particles as one mole of avogadro number of particles but the thing is one mole of everything will have same different masses because even though one mole of anything will contain the same number of atoms one mole of anything will contain the same number of atoms but will they will have different masses why because just because the number of atoms are going to be the same doesn't mean that they all going to weigh the same because all of the atoms will have different number of protons and neutrons okay so obviously they are going to weigh differently so finally let's define moles uh, in terms of a definition one mole of any substance one mole is the amount of any substance amount of substance amount of substance that contains that contains same number of particles same number of particles or atoms or molecules particles means they can be atoms or molecules amount of substance that contains same number of particles as there are in 12 grams of carbon 12 atom 12 grams of carbon 12 atom it's just a complicated way of saying the same thing that i have been saying many times that it is the amount of substance that contains the same number of particles what are those some same number of particles we're talking about the avogadro number it is the amount of substance that contains uh, avogadro number of particles as there are in 12 grams of carbon 12 atom and in 12 grams of carbon 12 atom there are also avogadro number of particles so basically one mole is what one mole is amount of substance in amount of substance in one mole of or you can say one mole is the amount of substance in avogadro number of particles of that substance is as simple as that even this 12 grams of carbon 12 atom whatever this is even this actually means what this means avogadro number because 12 grams of carbon 12 atom actually is made up of how many number how many carbon atoms avogadro number of atoms so we are actually looking at the same thing uh, just from a complicated perspective just so just remember as far as the understanding of the mole is concerned you just need to know one mole of anything is equal to the amount of substance that is present in amount of that substance that is present in avogadro number of those particles if you let's say if you are sitting on a bed there questions one mole of a question would be equal to the amount of substance amount of substance in in avogadro number of those questions but we don't use it you would we don't use moles as a tool to measure the amount of macroscopic things we use it to measure the amounts of microscopic things okay since you know that this is a huge number avogadro number is a huge number 6.02 into 10 raised to 23 this is a huge number and you actually have to take these number of atoms you actually have to take these number of atoms to be able to weigh them you have to take a lot of atoms to be able to weigh them because an atom has a very small mass okay so one mole of anything one mole of each thing does not will not have the same amount of substance that you should know but they'll have the same number of particles which is avogadro number of particles okay so this is the basic concept of moles now we are going to go towards the calculation part so you are going to study uh, four formulas in total one uh one is called one is moles is equal to mass over molar mass what is molar mass molar mass is mass of one mole of a substance that could be ar that could be mr okay then the second one would be moles is equal to volume over 24 i'll explain all of them one by one and their applicability third one is moles is equal to concentration into volume and that's all i think yeah that's all you need to know so uh this formula this formula is an all purpose formula this is used in all kinds of questions okay this formula is only used for to calculate the moles of gases this is only used to calculate the moles of gases because 24 here is called the molar gas volume and it is in decimeter cube molar gas volume what does that mean molar gas volume basically means the volume occupied by one mole of a gas the volume occupied by one mole of a gas and it is going to be the same for all gases for example one mole of oxygen will occupy the same volume as one mole of 
nitrogen which is equal to 24 dm cube one mole of any gas on this planet will only have will only occupy 24 dm cube okay so that is the generalization so we can also uh, say it like this that uh, avogadro number of particles of any gas would occupy this volume okay and the third third formula we use only for solution we use only for solutions okay now we are going to solve uh, in its questions okay because the best way to practice most is by by solving their questions okay now in the first <laughs> okay let me elaborate on one of the concepts let's say if a reacts with 2b to form 3c and 4d right or it would be better if i write just an equation this is a proper chemical equation nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia so i have this equation let's say he has told you that ammonia has 0.6 moles so using this equation always remember if you know if you know the moles of each of of any of the element of any of the constituent either on the reactant side or on the product side you can calculate the moles of all the constituents by using the proportion method or by the ratio method for example i want to he ask you in this equation let's say he ask you to calculate the moles of hydrogen calculate the moles of hydrogen so you do what you would simply use proportion so you will write moles of ammonia nh3 ratio moles of hydrogen i need to calculate the moles of hydrogen i already know that two moles of ammonia is being formed by three moles of hydrogen two moles of ammonia is being formed by three moles of hydrogen so when the ammonia's moles was 0.6 uh sorry uh, when hydrogen's mole was uh i need to calculate the moles of hydrogen sorry okay so when 0. Point, when there was 0.6 moles of ammonia he is asking you how many moles of hydrogen would be there you would say x so they will cross multiply you will have 2x is equal to 3 into 0.6 which would be 1.8 i think 1.8 x is equal to 1.8 divided by 2 so that's how you calculate moles you can actually you can also calculate the moles of nitrogen here just replace hydrogen with nitrogen and it had two ratio one so 0.6 what would be the x so you can just cross multiply and get the answer so just remember that uh, using this equation using the chemical equations you can actually calculate the moles of all the constituents by using the moles of any of one constituent okay just remember that now we are going to solve some past paper questions so question number 1 so this phosphorus is reacting with sodium hydroxide and phosphine is being formed and there's another compound that is being formed so he is asking you to calculate the mass of phosphine formed you need to calculate the mass of phosphine this is phosphine when 1.86 grams of phosphorus reacts with excess sodium hydroxide now the first step of any moles question the first step of any moles question is to calculate the mole itself Okay, if you don't even understand the question now you will just look at the information that is given in the uh, just given in the question just look at the information given in the question and see if you can calculate moles from it you will get at least one mark for example all that all the information that is given in the uh, in this question is that you have 1.86 grams of phosphorus so since you have mass you can calculate the moles of phosphorus by using moles is equal to mass over ar formula so mass is how much mass is 1.86 and it, uh, the atomic mass itself is 31 of phosphorus and you will get moles equal to 0.06 okay so you got the moles of phosphorus you need to calculate the mass of phosphine you need to calculate the mass of phosphine how do you calculate the mass of phosphine what can be the formula you can use the same formula moles is equal to mass over mr or ar right so and if you want to calculate mass this formula can be rearranged as mass is equal to moles multiplied by mr right so to calculate the mass of phosphine that we need to calculate you need the moles of phosphine how do you calculate the moles of phosphine you already know the moles of phosphorus you know the moles of phosphorus you can just 
compare them to calculate the moles of phosphine you can apply ratio so p ph3 so when there were four moles of phosphorus there was one mole of phosphine so when there were 0 0.06 moles of phosphorus how many moles will be of phosphine x so you will just cross multiply you will get 4x is equal to 0 0.06 and uh, the answer would be equal to 0.015 moles of phosphine we got the moles of phosphine okay you need to calculate its mass so mass is equal to moles multiply by mr so moles is 0 0.015 and you multiply it with the mr of phosphine which is 31 is the mass of phosphorus plus 3 is equal to 34 and the answer would be 0 0.51 grams so this is how you do it this is the one type this is one type of moles question that come in exams okay what did you do i'm just going to repeat it the first thing that you'll do in a moles question is to calculate the moles okay from the given information even if you don't understand the question even if you don't know what are you going to do to calculate a particular quantity just make sure that uh, from the given information just check that uh, from where from what information you can calculate the moles you just calculate the moles from there okay if you know the moles of any one of these if any if you know the moles of any one of these uh, reactants or products you can calculate the moles of anything any one of these reactants or products by comparison because you already know their ratios from the equation okay so let's do another question question number two so calculate the mass of nitric oxide you need to calculate the mass of nitric oxide formed when 100 gram of nitrogen reacts completely with oxygen and you need to calculate the mass of nitric oxide you don't know how to calculate it don't worry first thing you always need to do is to calculate moles from the given information so you have moles of nitrogen you have moles of nitrogen so moles will be equal to uh, so you have mass of nitrogen sorry so you will calculate the moles of nitrogen moles of nitrogen is equal to 100 divided by 28 it's it's nitrogen is always gas it's n2 okay you will take 28 as the mass so 100 divided by 28 would be 3.571 moles 3.571 moles of nitrogen okay you have the moles of nitrogen you need to calculate the mass of nitric oxide to calculate the mass of nitric oxide you again need the moles of nitric oxide because you need to apply the formula moles is equal to mass over mr so, cal so to calculate the mass you already know the mr you always know the mr okay you need moles of mm, NO. So what would you do? You will again apply ratios N2 ratio NO. So when there were one mole of nitrogen, there was two moles of nitrogen oxide. When there were 3.57 moles of nitrogen, there was X moles of nitrogen oxide. So you can simply multiply it by two. Uh, the answer would be 7.14. 7.14. Would be the moles of of nitric oxide. You can also calculate it directly. For example, you know that it's one ratio two, na? You already know it's one ratio two. You know the moles of nitrogen. When there were one moles of nitrogen, there were two moles of nitrogen oxide, nitric oxide. So you can simply multiply it by two as well. Now you need to calculate the mass of nitric oxide. So mass will be equal to moles into mR. Mole is seven point one four, and mR is nitric oxide is NO. Do not involve 2 here, okay? Do not involve 2 here whenever you calculate the MR. When you are calculating the MR, the mo you do not, you are only calculate the MR of one mole of any substance, okay? So, uh, nitric oxide uh, would be N is 14, oxygen is 16. So, 7.14 multiplied by 30 will be equal to 214 grams, 214.2 grams. That would be your answer. Okay, moving on to another question. That's the same question. It it did do not get confused by looking at the equation. It may look a bit 
a bit intimidating but don't get confused just get your basics right and you will be absolutely fine you need to calculate the mass of calcium hydroxide you need to calculate the mass of this to calculate this mass you need its moles and the first, the first step that you are going to do you are going to calculate moles of the substance which information you have given okay you are given the information of this CA3 SiO5 calcium silicate you are given the mass of calcium silicate you can calculate the moles of calcium silicate calculate the moles of calcium silicate they would be moles is equal to mass over MR 912 divided by MR you have to calculate the MR separately because it is a bit uh, complicated to do uh, 40 calciums uh, AR multiplied by 3 plus 28 plus 5 into 16 so you will have MR equal to 228 grams so moles is equal to mass over MR 228 so the answer would be 912 divided by 228 would be 4 moles will be 4 there will be 4 moles of calcium silicate ok you need to calculate the mass of calcium hydroxide so for that you need to calculate the moles of calcium hydroxide again you are going to use ratios so on one hand you have calcium silicate and on the other you have calcium hydroxide when there were 2 moles of calcium silicate there were 3 moles of calcium hydroxide ok so when there were this much moles of calcium silicate what would be the moles of calcium hydroxide there would be 4 3s are 12 is equal to 2x 2x is equal to 12 so x will be equal to 6 moles 6 moles of calcium hydroxide you need to calculate its mass mass will be equal to moles multiplied by mr so moles multiplied by mr of calcium hydroxide would be uh, 40 plus 34 Okay, 40 plus 34. Uh, that would be 74 multiplied by 6. Answer would be 444 grams of calcium hydroxide. Don't forget to write the units and whenever you calculate the moles of something, write down kiske moles nikale. Okay, do not forget uh, don't do not forget that. Otherwise, you're going to get confused. Ek moles nikale kiske the. I that uh, look here. For example, you are calculating moles, I, I wrote here that I calculated the moles of calcium silicate and I calculated the moles of calcium hydroxide. Okay, the when you are calculating moles, the unit of mole is MOL. You write MOL. Okay. Okay, next question. Okay, calculate the mass of potassium sulfate that can be prepared from 3.5 grams of potassium carbonate. Again, the first step would be to calculate the moles from the given information so you can calculate the moles of potassium carbonate it will be equal to 3.45 divided by its mr its mr would be k2co3 mr would be 39 into 2 plus 12 plus 16 into 3 and the answer would be 138 grams 3.45 divided by 138 and the answer would be 0.025 mole of K2CO3 you need to calculate the mass of potassium sulfate its mass you need to calculate for its mass you need to calculate its moles and how would you do that you would apply ratios as you can see there it's a 1 1 ratio between potassium carbonate and potassium sulfate so whatever is the moles of potassium carbonate they will be the moles of potassium sulfate so <clears throat> moles of potassium sulfate would also be equal to 0 0.025 mole K2SO4. Okay. The or most of these questions are three mark questions. So make sure that you write at least three answers for this. Okay. Do not. There are many other methods. There are other methods which uh, which are used to calculate moles, but uh, many other methods are not going to get you three marks because they do not give you three answers. They give you two answers. You get two marks. Okay, just make sure that you follow this template and you'll get inshallah all the marks. So you calculated the moles of potassium sulfate. Now you need to calculate the mass of potassium sulfate would be equal to moles multiplied by MR 0 0.025 multiplied by MR potassium sulfate's MR would be mm -hmm, let's calculate here 39 into 2 <coughs> plus 32 
plus 16 into 4 and the answer would be 174 grams. 0 0.025 multiplied by 174, the answer is 4.35 grams. So, in the first four questions, I used only this formula moles is equal to mass over MR. I only use this formula to calculate all of these, uh, to do all of these questions. Let's move on to another formula. Okay. Iron reacts with HCl to form iron chloride and hydrogen. A student added 2.1 gram of iron to 50 centimeter cube of this acid. Okay. In fact, before that, let's do this question. Question number 7. Okay, calculate concentration of aqueous sulfuric acid. So, you are given the volume as well as the volume of sulfuric acid, you are given the volume of sulfuric acid and you are given the volume and concentration of sodium hydroxide. Okay, the first step again will be to calculate the moles. But here, since you need to calculate concentration, you need to apply the formula moles is equal to concentration into volume. So, you are given the concentration of sodium hydroxide that is 0 0.15. 0 and you are also given the volume of sodium hydroxide that is 20 centimeter cube. Now the, the, the problem here is that the volume is in centimeter cube and the concentration in concentration units the volume is in decimeter cube. So you will have to uniform the units. So you make you have to make the units uniform in order for them to multiply. So you will, multi, so you will divide 20 by 1000 to convert centimeter cube into decimeter cube okay and the answer would be uh, <coughs> the answer would be 0 0.15 the 3 into 10 to raise power minus 3 moles of NaOH you need to calculate concentration of sulfuric acid calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid by just rearrange this formula it will become N over V. You need volume of sulfuric acid and moles of sulfuric acid. You already know the volume of sulfuric acid but you don't know the moles of sulfuric acid. So, uh, you will calculate the moles again by equating. Okay. Now, uh, you calculated the moles of NaOH so let's compare them. Let's compare the moles of NaOH and moles of H2SO4 to calculate the moles of H2SO4. So when there were two moles of sodium hydroxide there was one mole of H2SO4 and when there were 3 into 10 to raise power minus 3 moles of NaOH what would be the moles of H2SO4 so it would become 2x is equal to 3 into 10 to raise power minus 3 it will become x is equal to 1.5 into 10 to raise power minus 3 would be the moles of uh, H2SO4 you can calculate it directly as well as you can see there is when uh, when sodium hydroxide is 2, H2SO4 is 1. When there are 2 moles of sodium hydroxide, there is 1 mole of H2SO4. So, if there are this much moles of sodium hydroxide for H2SO4, it will be divided by 2. It will become half automatically. Okay, so you calculate the moles of H2SO4. You need to calculate the concentration. So, plug in the value in equation number 1 uh, of moles, which is 1.5 into 10 to raise power minus 3. And uh, volume would be volume given is 12 centimeter cube but since you need you need to calculate uh, concentrations in decimeter cube you will also have, you will always have to calculate concentration in decimeter cube in moles per decimeter cube so you have to convert the units of volume accordingly okay so 12 multi must be multiplied by 1000 if I just rearrange it a bit it would become in 2000 over 12 the answer would be uh, instead uh, instead of doing this actually use uh, this option in your calculator there is there is this button uh, which with this symbol use these this symbol to solve this question just plug in the whole fraction and you will get the answer 0 0.125 mole per dm cube okay Okay, so moving on to another question. Uh, okay, 
again uh, they look pretty intimidating these all of these formulas but you don't need to be scared of it just need to get your basics right like i said before the first thing that you'll always need to do is to calculate the moles from the given information in this particular question you have volume and concentration of sodium hydroxide so the first step would be you will calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide 18 multiply by 0.2 and obviously uh, this is in centimeter cube you'll have to convert it into decimeter cube divided by 1000 and the answer would be 3.6 into 10 to raise power minus 3 moles okay now you need to calculate the concentration of fumaric acid what is fumaric acid in this this is fumaric acid okay because sodium hydroxide was required to neutralize this much fumaric acid so this is sodium hydroxide this is fumaric acid now you need to calculate its concentration which is calculate that you would need its moles so moles is equal to c into v and concentration will be n over v so if you already have the volume uh, you must know the volume yes you have 60 centimeter cube of volume of humanic acid you need moles so it's pretty simple you calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide right if sodium hydroxide moles were 2 and fumaric acid was 1 so uh, you can simply halve the moles of sodium hydroxide to get the moles of fumaric acid you don't need to go uh, you don't need to do all of the method all of that ratio comparison again okay if you want to do it you can i'm just doing it quickly now so moles of fumaric acid would be 1.8 into 10 to raise per minus 3 okay that would be the mole of fumaric acid you need to calculate the concentration of fumaric acid that would be c is equal to n is 1.8 into 10 to raise power minus 3 and v is uh, 60 centimeter cube you'll have to convert it into thousand uh, decimeter cube by dividing by thousand and the answer would be 0 0.03 mole per dm cube okay okay <laughs> just looking for let's do another uh, question i want i'm just looking for a question that uses that gas formula that uh, calculate the moles of gas uh, mm, yes there, there there you go now here calculate the amount in moles of iron present so you have the mass of iron you can simply calculate the moles of iron by dividing its mass by mr or in this case is ar so moles will be equal to 2.1 the mass mr ar of iron is 56 so 2.1 divided by 56 the answer would be 0 0.0375 0 0.0375 moles calculate the amount of moles of hcl you have volume as well as concentration of HCl so that would be 50 over 1000 multiplied by 0 0.10 again the answer would be 50 divided by 1000 multiply by 0 0.1 the answer would be 5 into 10 to raise power minus 3 5 into 10 to raise power minus 3 okay now he's asking you to calculate the volume of hydrogen formed in this reaction you need to calculate the volume of hydrogen now you always use uh, you never use something that is in excess to calculate things okay especially if you already know that now you can you can calculate uh, hydrogen theoretically you can calculate hydrogen by using moles of both of these substances okay uh, but you will uh, you will only use in the moles of that that reactant which is not in excess we know that uh, uh, this particular reaction when a metal is being added into hcl to prepare a salt we already know in this reaction iron is iron is added in excess so you you will use the moles of hcl first thing first is you need to calculate the volume of hydrogen now to calculate the volume of a gas the formula that you use is volume over 20 
फोर ओके तो कैलकुलेट द वॉल्यूम दिस फॉर्मूला वुड बी चेंज टू वॉल्यूम इज इक्वल टू एन मल्टीप्लाई बाई ट्वेंटी फोर यू नीड मोल्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एयर तो यू नो द मोल्स ऑफ एच सी एल यू नो द मोल्स ऑफ एच सी एल हाइड्रोजन मोल्स आर हाफ ऑफ दैट सो मोल्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन वुड बी एन इज इक्वल टू मोल्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन वुड बी वन टू पॉइंट फाइव इन टू टेन टू रेज फॉर माइनस थ्री आई जस्ट हाव द मोल्स ऑफ Uh, ACL. You can you can put in put them in ratios and then calculate. You will get the same answer anyway. Okay. Now you need to cal calculate volume. So multiply this by twenty four. You will get uh, so two point five and ten to the minus three multiplied by twenty four. Okay. Now here you need to be very careful with the fact that the uh, volume that you are calculating is in centimeter cube. But the this twenty four is in decimeter cube, as I mentioned in the formula that when we did this. Uh, okay, here I mentioned that this volume is in decimeter cube, so don't forget that. Okay. Okay. We're doing this question. Wait a second. There you go. Okay, so uh, this is in decimeter cube, and the volume you're looking for is in centimeter cube. So you cannot, you cannot use the volume in decimeter cube to calculate the volume in centimeter cube. The so volume is equal to n into twenty four. N is two point five into ten to raise per minus three. You have to convert decimeter cube into centimeter cube by multiplying with thousand. Okay, it would be twenty four thousand centimeter cube. The answer would be. 60 cm cube so that's how you use that volume formula okay uh i hope you got uh, this question now mm -hmm -hmm. let me see if there is any other question that is a bit different uh yeah this is a bit different this one when one mole of oxygen molecules react this much energy is released when one mole of oxygen molecules react this much energy is released okay he is asking you calculate the amount of energy released when this much grams of oxygen molecules react okay the first thing you need to do in any moles question is to calculate the moles from the given information you calculate the moles of oxygen which will be equal to 48 over 16 you need to you need to take the mr of oxygen molecule like we did uh, even in the case of nitrogen in pre in previous question okay so it so what would be the answer the answer would be 3 moles so we know that one mole of o2 was producing this much energy so is asking you how much energy would be produced when this mass of oxygen molecules react i converted it into moles so it's pretty simple one mole of o2 is producing this much energy he is basically asking you uh, How much energy is being produced by this much moles? So just multiply the energy by the number of moles. We will get three multiplied by get the energy. Three multiplied by three ninety two. The answer would be one one seven six kilojoules per mole. One one seven six kilojoules, not per mole, just kilojoules. Right. So these are all the types of questions uh, that. Come in the gamut of moles. Okay, I hope you understood them. Uh, we are still left with percentage yield and the limiting reactant concept. Uh, we are going to discuss that in another lesson. Uh, but before that, I want to do some uh, some past paper questions uh, from the component P one with you. Okay, so just stay back for for a couple of minutes. uh instead we'll do p1 and shall in the next lesson uh i'll couple that with percentage yield because most of them actually come from uh those concepts so until then inshallah i'll see you later in another video on moles until then see you later allah hafiz